All right, so I think we're just going to get started. We're just going to get started. So, welcome to Wesley Students. This is obviously a different, a different feel to it with just a few of us here tonight. Um, but whether you're going to watch this live or whether you're watching um, on uh, on replay on Facebook or on YouTube, um, I just want you guys to know and, and want you to be aware that we're thinking about you and we're praying for you and with you and over you. Um, that uh, we're gonna, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more tonight, Joanne and I both. Um, but we just want you to know that, that we love you guys, and uh, and this is church a little bit different, um, but that's okay. And we feel like God is still at work, and God is still speaking, and God's going to speak tonight. Um, but so before we get into worship and get into a message, um, Ellen and I just have some some businessy type things that um, that we want to get through with you. Um, and so Ellen, you. I, Tell everybody what kind of like past this crazy because this is going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. Like past this crazy time on the horizon, what's coming up that you need to be aware of? Okay, so the next big thing is seniors. All seniors need to make sure that you register online on the website because our senior Sunday is going to be May third, and that is going to be your special day. We're going to hold um, a luncheon after service here on the main campus uh, for you and your families, and we want you to definitely be there. Um, the next thing which everybody gets excited about is VBS and we need all of our student volunteers um, to come out and help support and love and make sure that this wonderful week can actually take place because you guys really I don't know that we could do it without you so make sure that you register online but space is limited um, so go ahead and register the form is um, you can contact Aaron or myself if you don't have a link and we can get it to you um, we also have two summer mission trips, one for middle schoolers, which is going to be June the 24th through the 28th. We are going to Birmingham, Alabama. We have not been there before, so this will be a new trip for us, and I'm excited about it. And then we are going to go on River of Life once again in Milledgeville for our high school students, and that is going to be July 8th, 8th through the 12th. So all of that is stuff that you can register for now online remember most registrations um we have early bird and the closer we get to the dates those prices will go up so if you want the low 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 price register now um if you made uh, a t-shirt well, i don't know swag those long sleeve t-shirts or sweatshirts um or a hat we've got all that stuff in i know some of you picked it up last sunday but we have all that stuff in our office and it's ready to go um so this week starting on tuesday if you want to come and pick that stuff up, um, you can come anytime between nine and five. I know you're in school or maybe you'll be in school, um, but up until five o'clock, uh, we'll be open and you can come by and get your stuff. Um, and, and just do me a favor. Would you let us know you're coming before you get here? That way, if one of us aren't in the building, we can make sure that we've, we've got your stuff out ready for somebody to hand to you. Um, uh, and again, like if you ordered a hat, the hats are in too. Um, so if you've got any other questions about student ministry, um, I know that things are kind of in flux right now. Uh, we're not really sure what the next three or four weeks are going to look like. Um, and, and as we find out those details, we want to be sure to get them to you as quickly as we can. That way, you know, you're informed and you're up to date about what we're happening and what we're, what we're doing. Um, so you can contact Ellen, you can contact me. Email is a great way to do that. Parents, um, if you've got questions, that we can, when we get back to our desk, we can sit down and, and reach you, but you can call us or text us or whatever you want to do. Absolutely. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so the reason that we're, we're here and, and broadcasting is because we just really feel like this is, this is normal. I was telling some of us before that... Um, in a world that's constantly changing, God is the only thing that doesn't. And, um, and in the midst of the craziness, sometimes we end up reaching for things that are familiar. And this is something familiar, even though it might not look familiar or feel familiar. Um, Sunday nights and church and Wesley students and friends is something that we're all used to. And so I think it was important for us to maintain a little bit of normalcy tonight and and bring to you something that you can enjoy even digitally and so that's why we're here so we're going to move to a time of worship um 
We've got uh, our modified worship band over here, uh, including me. I'm not sure why I'm playing, um, but we're going to give it a go, right? I guess I won't ask you to stand with us because I don't know where you're at. I don't know if that's safe for you right now. So just be where you are, and we're going to worship together. We're excited to have you on this stream, right? All of the typical worship leader things don't work in this context, I'm discovering. <laughs> you know, none of them work. We're glad you're with us.
thank you that even though we're in different places, we're in different places in our lives, we're in different places geographically, we're probably in different places mentally and spiritually. God, I thank you that we are all wrapped up in the same love that you have given to us. I pray that you would give us peace and comfort in knowing that, in knowing that you are with us even when we're not with each other in the ways that we're used to. God, I thank you with us for your presence even when we're not that follows us no matter where we are. I pray that we would trust and lean into that presence tonight. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Rebecca. I felt like I needed that too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that felt really nice. Um, I think we found a little bit of that in God being the provider of what we need when it was over a month ago, we sat around as a staff talking about what our Lenten focus was gonna be and we decided on prayer. And we couldn't have foreseen where we were at and how desperately we would need prayer and, but God was paving the way for us and preparing us. So um, I, I love that we, we I love that we chose that because no matter no matter how old you are, no matter if you're if you're five or fifteen or fifty, um, everybody has a next step that they can take in their prayer life. Right? I, I've never met anybody who has said to me, you know. Um, I know I have a lot of areas to work on, but my prayer life, I'm like, I'm good. I'm really good. I've never met anybody yeah. that's been able to tell me that. And so that tells me that, um, that we are always in a place where we can grow in our prayer life. And so that's why I thought it was so cool and so important that we, we were working through this as a church, but also as a student ministry. Yeah, yeah. Growing in Him is our forever journey. Um, I have loved what you have done thus far. Um, the first week, you were talking about the importance of upward prayers, which are prayers of praise for God and really just putting words to how incredible He is and the place He holds in our heart and just singing our praises to Him. Um, and I think we found just the importance of that within our prayer life because it humbles us. And it creates in us a heart that is ready to engage with God the way we were meant to engage with Him. It is that ability to truly see that He is God and I am not. And be able to start a prayer just from that place of humility. Um, the next week you talked about downward prayers, which are prayers of confession. Which is this process of actually putting words to... Where have I failed? Where have I sinned? What have I done wrong? And being open enough to look at it ourselves and present it to God and saying, this is the mess that I have. And thank you so much for being willing to just take this and that I want to change, I want to turn to a better way. I want to turn from what I was doing and turn towards your ways, God. And those downward prayers are so crucial because that's when we're really being real with God. And God ultimately wants to engage with the real you, the one he created. And so he doesn't want us hiding behind a facade of everything's fine here. He wants the real us. And so being able to engage in that humility and that honestness is a really great first step to really getting to um, where our hearts need to be when we engage with God. Um, last week, Scott talked and I thought he did an excellent job. And this was about prayers forward, which were um, prayers for my own future and my own self and where I'm at. Um, and I think 
so often those are things like, um, what are my worries? What are my worries for today? What are my worries for tomorrow? And God wants to hear all of those, but I loved the way that Scott framed it last week. And you know, maybe that's because he chose one of my favorite verses, which is, um, do not conform any longer to the ways of the world, but be transformed through a renewing of your mind. And I think that verse encapsulates the journey that God wants us to take in our prayer life, whether we're five or whether we're 90, that prayer was meant to transform us, to, for us to surrender to Him and say, I don't want the world's ways. I don't even want my ways. I want to find your ways, God and figuring out what that looks like to change ourselves and being willing to be changed. Um, and I think that the humility and the honesty is that great place to start from that, just sharing with him what you're feeling openly. Um, it could be as easy as having a conversation with God and saying, you know, I've got hurts inside of me right now. I really feel like I was betrayed by a friend who, who didn't come through in the way I thought that they should come through for me. And I have found when I open up and I'm honest and I share that with God and I say it out loud in front of Him, that's kind of that first step to changing and renewing what's going on in my mind and in my heart. Because when I say it out loud to Him, He oftentimes through his spirit takes me on this journey and allows me to see it more from the other person's point of view and not just my own. And I can start to see the path that they might be traveling. And I start to have more empathy for their point of view and their feelings and what, how they're approaching the situation. And it also helps me to kind of own my own piece of the pie of, of where I might be wrong in that. And through this process of being open and honest with God about what I'm feeling in life, if it's a big thing or if it's a little thing, that sharing process of Him transforms me. And it makes me new and it makes me clean. And some of those things that might be in my heart, like jealousy or bitterness, that process of turning them over to Him helps to wash them out of my own heart, out of my own mind, and that's that process of renewing us and taking on this, us on this journey to make us more like Him, to make us see other people more the way He sees them, to allow us to see the world and ourselves the way He sees us. Now in this, la then this next one, the fourth one we're talking about prayer, we're talking about prayer for others. Um, what a great time to focus on prayers for others. This is what our world is crying out for right now. And I think we are in the perfect position to just step in and, and be a prayer for those who need it. I, I was, um, I was thinking, ahead. yeah, I was thinking this week about that verse in Esther where it talks about, you know, being born for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I was, I was in an event on Friday night where, where the speaker was talking about just the next generation and, and how much, mm -hmm. He really believed with all of his being, and I believe this too, that that great change is coming with our next generation. And then and that in this time and in the context and the season that we find ourselves, in the midst of all the craziness, even if it just lasts for four weeks, three weeks, two weeks, or, or longer, that the next generation might be able to step into a leadership role and show other people what it means to care for and care about others. Um, this is a generation of action I have found, that they don't just put words to it. Words are important, but their hearts are so big, and they're leaning so hard into God and who God is calling them to be, and, and they take that and they move forward with it. I, I, I come to youth on Sunday night because you guys all give me hope. You give me hope for the world in the way that you are engaging with God and the way that you take that and make it real in other people's lives. Um, so maybe, maybe tonight's conversation can be a springboard for you to think about the ways that you might um, 
hopefully pray for other people because that's specifically what we're talking about. But how might, how might you be able to lean into and leverage this gifting that you have um, to care for and be about action and be about, um, be about taking a step to care towards um, somebody else? So I hope, I hope that's what we can accomplish tonight, um, that, that you can um, understand how important it is to pray for other people. Um, but also in this, in this time that we're in, in this crazy time that we're in, um, that you might be able to take a step forward in loving and caring for others. So let me read the scripture that, that we've selected for tonight, um, and then we'll go from there. So this is Ephesians 3.14, and, and I'll just give you a minute to get there if you want to get to it, um, it on, on a phone or, or whatever, you're, if you've got a Bible in front of you, or you can just listen. This is Ephesians 3.14 through 20. It's Paul talking. And Paul says this, he says, For this reason, I kneel before the Father. So he's praying. He says, From whom his whole family in heaven and earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know that to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who was able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine according to his power that is in work within us, to, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I love the way that Paul starts out his prayer for the people by reminding himself, I think, how much God loves all people. And I think it's, that is a really great way to start praying for anyone, is to really start to think about how much God loves them. Because when we're able to see other people with the same kind of love that God has for them, it invites us just into a different kind of understanding of the journey that they're on right now, or they might have traveled. Um, it really opens us up. You know, I used, sometimes we're very tempted to think that, um, you know, the relationship is just between me and God. Like, if I'm good with God and then I feel like God is good with me, that's enough. But I have found that there are really three elements when you read through the Bible, time and time and time again, God is saying, you know, to to care for one another, to encourage one another, to love one another. There are, I don't know, like a hundred one another verses in the Bible that the other is an extremely important part of our relationship with God. Um, I, I'm kind of, I like to visualize things and I have always visualized this as our faith is like this three-legged stool or a three-legged table that has the components of God self and others and we need to fully engage and have presence all of those three factors in order to have the right balance in our faith that each leg needs to be strong each leg needs to be fully cared for the way it needs to and so this connection between how i care for you is connected to my relationship with god and vice versa yeah um, I think, um, so, so Joanne, how, how do you, um, how do you put that into practice? Like how, how are, if, if this is a component and if one feeds off of the other, like what are some tangible things that we can do in order to help keep the balance right? Um, I believe that, um, sometimes we need to check ourselves too. One of my favorite verses, it sounds like the most simple verse in the world, but it has helped me. There is a verse, it is in Romans, and it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice, and mourn with those who mourn. And that sounds really simple. Sometimes it's hard to fully rejoice with those who have something really good happening to them. Because sometimes some of the ugliness that's going on inside of myself keeps me from fully rejoicing with them. And so I think that that's a really great way to check, like, where am I with other people? Am I able to really rejoice when something good happens to you? Am I able to fully mourn when you're going through a hard time? 
And, and that's a really good checkpoint for self, you know, what, what is the state of my heart? And do I need to take this to God and kind of do some repair so I can have that strong relationship and be thinking and seeing you the way that God intends me to? So I, I've, I've, I've always found it pretty, pretty easy. Um, not that prayer is ever a super easy thing for me, but I've found it easier to pray for the people that I love um, because those are the people that I surround myself with and the people that, you know, I think we all just kind of gravitate, gravitate towards caring for those people that we love. Uh -huh. But what about the people that are really hard to love? And what about the people that are really hard to pray for? How, because God calls us to, um, to love and to pray for, right? In, Jesus, uh, in, in Matthew um, 5, Jesus talks about praying for those um, who persecute you yeah. and pray, pray for your enemies. Mm -hmm. And so in this context, and, and, and because I know, I know we all get along with everybody, right? And we, we, we love everybody. But how do, we, how, do we, how do we practice praying for people who have hurt us or wronged us or, or um, have betrayed us? How, how, mm -hmm. do, how does that happen? I, I think it, it starts by starting. <laughs> Like really coming to that humble and honest place of God with God alone and saying, this, this is what I'm feeling and kind of hold it up before a holy God and allowing him to see where it's at and then start to do the work to transform your heart. And it's amazing when you invite God into the mess that might be inside of you, how he picks that up in a kind and gentle way, and starts to allow you to see the other person in another way. Starts to allow you to see where perhaps maybe some of the things that you attributed just to meanness, you know, the reality is they might come from brokenness or they might come from that other person's own hurt. And we, when we invite God in, and it's not just our own voice in our head, but it's that gentle, all-seeing voice of God, we're able to open up the relationship to be more honest and more compassionate. Because when we invite God in, compassion and love is exactly what we're inviting into our own hearts. Yeah, I think, I think too that, that even though it's difficult and even though it's hard, um, you putting somebody in your heart to pray for, even if they're difficult to love or difficult to get along with, um, God God does something, and, and I don't know if I can accurately even describe what happens, but it's this miraculous thing where you begin to think about that person differently, mm -hmm. and, and, and God does a work on your heart. When, you, when you're asking God to change somebody else, maybe sometimes it's even God changes your heart. Yeah. And sometimes it's that God changes your heart in order to be able to accept what's happened to you or what they've done to you or what they've said to you. Um, sometimes God changes your heart when you pray for other people. Sometimes God changes your heart to accept a decision that they have made that you don't agree with. How many times has that happened? Where you've been praying for somebody or thinking about somebody and they've made a decision um, that you are praying specifically against. Uh, but a lot of times I think that God, if, if we're fervent in our prayer and we're honest with our prayer life, um, God does something there um, that's really special where he gives us a peace and he gives us understanding um, that God is in control and we are not, that, that control is really just an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, says the, the control way. freak. <laughs> yeah, you are a little. Um, the last verse, how Paul said it in 20, um, reminds us that we have, you know, this is not a small power that we are tapping into when we pray. This is the power of the resurrection. Um, he says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, within us. And that whole idea that the power of the resurrection means that there is not one thing that is beyond God's ability to change. There is not one relationship. There is not one wayward heart. There is nothing that he does not have the power to redeem. And I think leaning hard into that and saying, 
yes, God, I will give it over to you and I will understand that in you, all things can happen, even beyond what I can imagine. But it's that submitting it to him that is the first step. And, and it does take time. Yeah. It does take a long time. Uh, and, and, and that we're, you know, the, our, our ability to pray for others isn't something that just kind of happens overnight, right? This is something that um, we, it takes concentration, just like anything else that you want to do. Um, uh, taking one step forward in your prayer life often often is just something that you have to make a decision every day to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, that's why I love, you know, little reminders and things we do. I sh- share with our church the other week that I, I actually really hate these bracelets because I think they're uncomfortable. And th- whenever I, whenever I, you know, and you uh, yeah, I do, I fidget, fidget with it, <laughs> but it's, but it's there to remind me to pray for other people and to pray for myself and um, to pray that, to pray for our church. Um, and so, you know, doing little things, um, that help us to remember to pray um, f- for a variety of different things, I think is helpful and trains us to, to not just think about our own selves and our own desires, um, but also putting others first and putting Jesus first. Uh, and I think that, that that's a good, healthy, um, not, maybe not easy thing to do, but it's a consistent thing to do in order to build repetition um, it takes like over 2,000 times to make something a habit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so trying to set yourself up for the win in your prayer life, um, you know, maybe that's the challenge for this week is to try to find things to do in your daily routine that help to set yourself up for the win in your prayer life. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like taping somebody's name to your bathroom mirror because everybody looks at the mirror, right? So um, putting somebody there, putting their name on the mirror just to help you think about them and pray for them um, when you get up or when you go to bed or, or whatever, um, just just being consistent because that, that builds habit. Yeah. Um, we, we had just a couple people um, who sent in some things uh, beforehand, um, just some students who were asking, you know, how can we pray for people this season, like uh, this, this COVID-19, um, I think there's a lot of worry from students uh, and rightfully so about people. And so how, what, what might be some things that we can pray for? What, what might be some things we can pray for this week? Um, you want to, you want to tackle that? Um, I, I think a big part is, um, turning over our worries to God to start off with. Um, I think that, especially as Americans, we are kind of like, I got this, and we try to put up this strong front and everything's fine. And the reality is a lot of this is uncharted territory. And I think that this is the time to lean fully into him and to be honest with him and, you know, share what you're feeling with him. He wants to hear that. Um, I think it is also... You know, it is, it, we have circles. Pray, pray for your family. Um, you're going to spend a lot of family time. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that can be a wonderful growing time. For some people, that's hard. It's a hard road. Um, but this is an opportunity to really decide, I, w- I want to love on these people that are within my family that God has given to me in the very best way that I can. And making that your goal of just, I'm, I'm going to love all these who are close. And then I think we can take it out another step and think about those who are in situations that might be the same as us or might be completely different. Um, I, I know that we are going to be looking at some economic challenges, you know. And even though in your household things might be okay for a duration, that's not how it is for everybody. Um, and and taking the time kind of to think about your own situation and then thinking about those who might not be as blessed as you and and having a heart for them you know whether it's you're kind of you know tired of being inside what what about those who don't even have an inside to be in you know we 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 have all those around us so um, I think just taking time to ask God Who do you want to lay on my heart? Who do I need to be praying for during this time? I have never, ever asked God, 
who, sh who should I be focusing on that he hasn't answered? Right. He answers when you ask that. And, and also that prayer isn't wasted. No. But right, prayer is never wasted. It's not like, it's not like our prayers um, like dissipate into some cloud and fog and mist. Um, God hears prayers. And there's never, there's never a time where we can pray too much. No. Um, and so I think that to, to find a, a to find time to pray, you know, this week and then the weeks and, and month to come. Um, I think that, that that's never wasted and, and God hears and honors and works in those prayers. Um, I had a student ask on, on social media, uh, how, how do you stay calm in the chaos? And I think a lot of that's the same, uh, what we just talked about, but um, I think it's finding things that are familiar, just like what I was saying at the beginning of the broadcast. Finding things that are familiar you know, God is something. God is, is something that never changes. Uh, new news will tell you that things are changing rapidly, like hour, hour to hour, day to day, minute to minute, even. Um, but God never changes. Jesus never changes. He's been the same before, and He's the same now, and He will always be the same. Um, and so I know that I know that this week might bring changes, um, and that's okay, um, because I know one thing about our students is that you're resilient. Um, this generation, gener Generation Z, is, is just so resilient um, that, and sometimes that's, that's something that older generations really need to see. Um, and so just remember, like this week or in the weeks to come, that when things seem chaotic and things, things seem um, crazy, uh, hold on to the things that are familiar. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to King Jesus um, because he is a he is a rock, and he's consistent. Um, he always shows up. Um, he's he is always ready and always willing to hear and to listen. Um, but also, he's already at work, whether we can feel it or not, um, whether we know it or not, whether we believe it or not. He's still at work. Uh, and so, if you find yourself, students, parents, grandparents, whoever, if you find yourself kind of in this state of anxiousness, uh, and I think we all can. We all can feel that way at certain times, and even if we don't let it, even if we don't let on with it, right? Even if we don't, uh, even if we're not expressive about it, um, I think we all have felt that. Even the last day or two or three, um, you know, just remember, just remember what is consistent in your life and who is consistent in your life, and that's Jesus. His promise is He will never leave you, and He will never forsake you. Lean hard into that. So um, how, about, how about this? Can you and I both pray together? Sure. Um, and you can start and I'll finish uh, and then we'll wrap up our broadcast. And, and then the, only, the, the last thing I'll say before we pray is, is look, I don't know what's going to happen next Sunday. I don't know if we're going to be here or whether we're be outside or whether we're going to be doing this again. Um, and so as we find out that information, we certainly want to get it to you. So just stay tuned to social media and, and email um, and text messages. If you're not on our text system, you can send me a message, however you want to send it to me. It just says, hey, put me on the text system so that I can get updated information. Um, so we'll, we'll let you know about next Sunday what our plan is. Um, but I know one thing is that we love you very much. Uh, and we want to be a part of your something, not experience, but more than that, we want to be a part of your faith and your journey every day. And so let us know how we can help you and serve you in that way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Thank you so much that you are with us, that you have promised that, whether it's here at Wesley Church, whether it's at home in front of, um, you know, a computer, whether we are on the phone, walking around outside, Lord, you are with us and you will not leave us. Help us just to lean lean into that promise and Lord let us just look at this as a time when we just talk to you get our commands from you and see in brand new ways maybe how we can shine your light in a world where there's a lot of light that needs to be shined into maybe it's a calling a friend Maybe it's just reconnecting with a sibling. We don't know exactly what plans you have for us, Lord, but we know that your ways are good 
and you invite us to be that shining light in your world that reminds all the world that you are the hope. And God, we just ask tonight that you would help us to take a next step. God, whatever that next step might be, maybe it's in our prayer life. God, maybe it's in our relationships. Um, maybe it's just spending quiet time with you. Um, maybe that's just uh, uh, being more consistent in, in getting into your word. Um, Father, we all know that we've got a next step, but sometimes, sometimes it's hard to understand exactly what, what that is. So, Father, would you just do a work in us and do a work on us, God, that you might reveal to us something this week um, that we can work on, that we can give over, that we can hand over, that we can release to you. Father, I pray specifically for our community, um, for Columbia County, for Evans, uh, for Grovetown, for Augusta, for Marnez, Father, for the students that uh, make up our schools and for their families. Um, God, that this week they would feel your presence. God, that in the midst of anxiety, in the midst of craziness and change, um, interrupted schedule, uh, God, that we, even though all that's happening, um, that we would know that you are in control. God, that we can rest in the fact that you are at work. Um, God, that we can let go of, of feelings of of. of anxiety and, 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 and wonder and fear um, and we can just rest in the promise that you'll never leave us nor will you forsake us. Um, Father we love you and we praise you. We're thankful for this technology where we can still meet even though it feels a little different. Um, God we're thankful for our church uh, and for our students. God may you love and keep us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks.